Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Professor Richard Conroy of Conroy Gold and Natural Resources. Welcome back, Richard. It's great to have you back on. Thank you very much indeed. Good to talk with you, as ever. Good, yeah. Uh, So obviously today you announced a new gold discovery in Longford Down Massive with visible native gold and assay results of up to 123 grams per tonne gold in quartz brescia samples. The discovery was made during prospecting in the Mines Royal Auction area, south of the Clay Lake Gold Discovery area. The company plans to carry out a trenching and drilling program to better assess the mineralization in the area. And you commented in the news release that the discovery has the potential to transform gold exploration and development in the region and could indicate the potential for the district to become a tier one gold area. Do you want to add any more to this? Well, it's it's, it's so absolutely uh, outstanding that it's almost difficult to add anything uh, to it. Those grids are absolutely exceptional. Uh, the one of over 120 grams a ton, but the others are very, very high as well. And uh, we now, I suppose, in, in adding to it, if you like, that um, we not only know that there are a whole series of uh, gold targets scattered over this very large area. It's, remember, it's over five, 800 square kilometers, over 500 square miles. And we now know that um, some of the highest grades that you could imagine you'd get in gold uh, exist within the area. Uh, so it's absolutely transformational. And that's why I believe that in due course, it may indeed be a, a tier one producing area, which is, uh, of course, of enormous importance. We've known up until now that we would have um, some producing mines, perhaps even a series um, of them. And we've seen some some good grades before, but nothing like this. And it has all sorts of implications, both over the area as a whole, What is the situation to depth? What other very high-grade deposits may be lying there? There are a whole series of possibilities uh, ahead. Um, But we now know, uh, no longer as a possibility, but as an absolute certainty, um, that very high grades exist in the area and that many targets exist in the area. Uh, So it really is transformational. Uh, And of course, um, we have the licenses uh, for this entire area. There's no time limit on them so long as we do our work programs and so on. Uh, We have a joint venture partner uh, with ample uh, resources. Uh, So we're in a very good position indeed, with a huge amount of work ahead, but it's very nice work to be doing. Very good. I mean, it it is sort of hard to grasp. I've been saying to people today, uh, are people actually going to believe now that we're seeing these type of grades that, uh, you know, there is gold in them, the hills and, and, you know, in this down massif? uh, Because effectively, this obviously goes into Northern Ireland, this part of Northern Ireland. So Clay Lake itself is in Northern Ireland and then this continues. So uh, the new king will be very happy that you're going to produce some gold, maybe... uh... (laughs) I'm glad to hear that. It uh, it really is a tremendous uh, addition to all the other discoveries we've made, but it transforms them uh, because of the grades. Uh, The fact that uh, it is, I suppose, another aspect of it too, is that it's several miles away from the already very extensive Clay Lake gold discovery. Uh, So it opens up the whole area uh, in between those two discoveries. Yeah, Clay Lake was where they found the huge nugget that's in the Ulster University, is that right? Uh, yes, indeed. And that's very relevant because um, the Clay Lake itself, the actual lake where the nugget uh, was found, was found by a chap out with a, one of these metal prospectors, uh, what he was looking for, but he, he came across this. Um, and the nugget itself is in the now in the Ulster Museum. And indeed, they very kindly uh, allowed us to, to come and see it. It's a, it's a lovely nugget. But the question was, well, what was its significance in, in geological terms, in terms of the presence of gold? Because as you know, though we've made very extensive discoveries in what we call the, the Clay Lake uh, Prospect, and uh, these extend over several kilometers, nonetheless, uh, the type of gold that we were 
seeing there uh, was gold dissolved in the actual rock, whereas the clay lake nugget, you've actually got quartz gold there. Uh, and what we've done with today's discovery, uh, apart from the, the very, very high grades, is that it is also in quartz. And that opens up the whole area in terms of potential for very large amounts of gold to be there, uh, both between the gold, which is uh, contained and dissolved, as it were, within the rock, uh, and this gold, which is, I think, mentioned somewhere in the news release, visible gold. You can see some of it, and it's quartz gold. It's a huge step forward in the geological understanding of the potential of the area for mineralization. The Clay Lake Nugget up until now has been very uh, intriguing, raising questions. What does that mean? Now we think we've at least begun to get some of the answers, and they're very positive answers indeed. So, so there's a possibility that there's some sort of connection between Clay Lake and this uh, Royal Mines or mine yeah, in Kidi. There's a possibility that there's some sort of connection between the, the gold seams well, in, in that situation. Not only that, there is indeed a possibility that gold will be found between Clay Lake and uh, this, this new discovery, that there are two, as it were, potential types of gold there are our production point of view in that there's the gold which we've already discovered very extensively in clay lake and remember down to a relatively low level a couple of hundred meters and as well as that uh, the gold of the sort that was represented by the magnificent uh, clay lake gold nugget after which we uh, named uh, that um, exploration area but this is gold which is like that which you see in the Clay Lake Gold Nugget, and it's visible, uh, and it's in extraordinarily high grade. Uh, so if there's uh, much more of that around the place, it'll be a very major find indeed. Mm-hmm. So the whole gold exploration program, not only, by the way, in Northern Ireland, although well, that's very important, and it's in Northern Ireland that both Clay Lake and this discovery were made, but the, the actual physical trend extends down uh, into the south of Ireland, you've got Clan Tibbridge, you've got uh, over the Sleeve La, you've got a series of targets on either side, indeed, of the border. But this is a, a magnificent result, a magnificent find with absolutely fantastic grades. It's really, really tremendous. And mm-hmm. I can tell you, by the way, um, these grades uh, have been tested retested and tested all over again under the most stringent conditions. And of course, ALS Laboratories is one of the leading laboratories uh, throughout the world and and the particular laboratory in which it was done as a leading international laboratory. Uh, But certainly we checked and rechecked those results, I can tell you, and they stand up. Now, uh, I'm sure that uh, the joint venture partner is also extremely happy to make an export. And they're basically now going to be a trenching program first, and then a drilling program is well, planned in this area. Well, basically, we are the operator. Remember, we've been working here for the last 20 years and uh, building up. Uh, all this information and making these various discoveries. We started off just at Clontebrit, one single discovery, now shown over the years with a tremendous amount of work by the geologists and everyone else concerned um, that it is in fact a a 40-mile gold trend, uh, which is is big by any international standard, 65 kilometers, 40 miles, that there are a series of gold targets along it. And we're continuing to act as operator in conjunction with, obviously, our joint venture partner, they have some very skilled uh, geologists overworking with our guys, with our guys who have made the, the original discoveries and are continuing to play the major part in what's well, it? It's a joint venture now and a joint venture technically. But the other aspect, of course, is uh, that the sort of funds which were unavailable to us, we spent a lot of money, 20 million in total over the 20 years. But we were going out there as a small company, a good track record perhaps, but still as a small company, it's difficult going out, raising the million. Some of that has to go into just running the company and you're left with relatively small sums for the actual exploration progress. And my goodness, our guys did a very good job with the money they had. But now the situation is, of course, transformed. We have the, the money to do the sort of thing which has resulted in this fantastic discovery and to follow it up now uh, with all the various things that the guys will do. You've mentioned some of that already, trenching and drilling and all the rest of it. It really is a very good situation in which we now are. 
And not only that, of course, that under the terms of the deal, uh, and many people out at the, the big Toronto show and, and, and PDIC were saying how, what an exceptionally good deal it was, um, because we currently, of course, have 100%, the joint venture partner, it's an earn-in arrangement, it's very good for them too, they're now onto what may be a very, very large gold uh, area indeed, um, so it's a good deal for them as well, but it's a very good deal for us, in that we currently hold 100% of it, and they earn in by uh, spending certain several million uh, in order to earn 25%, uh, several more million in order to bring that up to 40%. And then it stops at that unless we move or they move to bring in a given uh, project. And if so, all of the costs of bringing in that project right up to the mine construction stage all of the technical costs, all of the environmental costs, all of the planning costs, and believe me, these can mount up to many millions. They're all covered from our point of view. We don't have to contribute to that. And yet, at the end of that, we're in a situation uh, in which when mine is under construction and going ahead, uh, we retain 42.5%. And if I put that in context, most small companies are very lucky if they're holding on to a few percent. And we have several different options. We can hold the entire 42.5%, which will be our intention, by the way. Uh, but we have also other uh, options that we could use if we so wished. And then if another project comes up, and I'm sure there'll be several projects here, and particularly after these results, again, it's the same process that our joint venture partners have the 40%, but to move up to 57.5%, all of those expenses that I've mentioned, technical expenses, environmental planning, all the rest of them, to bring us to mining construction stage, um, have to be paid by the joint venture partner. We don't have to do so, because it's an earn-in arrangement, but we still retain 42.5% if we so wish. And so it goes on. If there's a third project, same process once, once again. So from our point of view, it's a very good deal. But on the other hand, Mm -hmm. uh, from the joint venture partners, they will be the major shareholders well. in each of these projects. And these projects mm -hmm. now obviously look as though they could be very good gold projects indeed. That's right. Well, if they pick in pieces of gold up and stick it in the pocket, then it's going to be a very good project <laughs> for everybody. But I'm going to ask you two so very direct questions. <laughs> yeah, Please. I'm going to ask you two very direct questions. The first sure. question is, do you need cash? We don't. We don't well... Cash is always very welcome, but we don't need cash in the sense that we don't have to pay all these very, very heavy expenses indeed. We don't we don't need to do that. That's that's covered in the joint venture. You so the operator so the operating costs running of the company the... and that sort of thing. And there may be one or two other opportunities that we see. Um, but we don't have to pay the very large amounts of money uh, which we've been paying up until now. That's now the business of the joint venture partner. Just to confirm it, you have enough cash to keep yourselves going for the next no, couple of years? No. So I wouldn't say, say that, but any cash that we wish to uh, raise at this stage uh, is very different from any cash we were raising previously. We don't need to raise cash for these heavy expenditures. We may raise, raise some cash for one reason or another to cover overheads or because we see a good opportunity or something like that. But we don't, we, we have no large heavy cash expenditures of the nature that we've had for the last 20 years and which will okay. become far greater now. We don't have to pay any of that. So I'm now going to ask you the second direct question. The first question I asked you the last time was, you know what the answer was. This time, now you've found an extension to the gold district and literally you're picking pieces of gold up and putting them in your pocket. Would you accept a hundred million pounds for somebody to buy you out now? I very much uh, doubt it. This absolutely transforms the situation. You could be looking at um, uh, something very large indeed, uh, not only in terms of the uh, actual volume of gold, which we see is spread in various targets right throughout the entire 500 square miles, uh, but now you're looking at some of the highest gold grades uh, that have been uh, recorded, certainly in recent times, and uh, these high gold grades uh, have enormous implications uh, of course, in financial terms, if you're developing a mine uh, on the property. So this is, is we'll, we'll, you know, we're still taking it on board ourselves. I must, must confess, we, we thought it might be very good, but we certainly, we looked at those figures and, and we really looked at them because they are fantastic figures. You're planning a mine, you're looking at what grade will you work at? Uh, and people work mines down to, you know, two grams a ton, one gram a ton, even down to half a gram a ton. And I'm not saying all this is going to be 
uh, 104 ounces or 123 grams a ton, uh, but certainly it makes it highly possible uh, that we'll have some very high grades uh, and this, in turn, has enormous financial implications. I mean, I mean, the market liked obviously. I mean, in, in the morning, the shares oh, sure. the, the shares moved up to about twenty yeah. percent or twenty five percent. That's that's just ridiculous now in terms of the um, of, of, of the financial implications of the discovery and technical implications of it. Um, yeah, but that's up to the market. But absolutely, and the market will decide. But I mean, if you look at historically in the last sort of you know the fifty-two week high is of around the forty and you know, the mid forties. What, yeah. what you know, it, it's it's bizarre to think how far the company has come in that time since the share price was there. So you know, let's hope that the market does see some value in it now going forward. Uh, yeah, I'd say there's some people who've already made, made a few bob on the market, and uh, one would anticipate that people are going to make a lot of money going forward. We certainly believe that the, the market price is, I won't say irrelevant, that it would be un, un, untrue. And you have to accept that it takes a while to take things on board. We looked at these results and we looked at them and so, so on, and, and they are fantastic uh, results. They have huge implications both for the actual prospectivity of the entire area uh, and uh, for the uh, financial uh, attractiveness um, of these figures. It absolutely transforms your figures if you're sitting down and and, and doing your, your potential mine costs. A lot of work still, obviously, to be done. But the whole situation has transformed us from this morning. So I presume we're going to get a, another broken note fairly shortly with an update on this, because obviously this changes the picture drastically. I, I would hope so. I think our broker has brought out something uh, this morning, as far, as far as I'm aware. They've been, uh, as you can imagine, the phone's been ringing and there have been a, a heck of a lot of things com- coming in every moment since... The news broke this morning, but um, yes, I think I, th- I think we always have to look at the, something of that nature and, of course, com- coming out. But we're really taking this on board still from knowing that we had an entire gold district, that we had a very, very good joint venture, and now we have these results on top of it. It's really transformational. Yeah, I was going to say, just, so to, just to confirm that yeah, there was a first equity comment on that this morning where they've revised their target to 156 pence, and that was released about, I don't know, half an hour ago. So that, that is out well, there for, uh, for listeners to to look at. We'll put the yeah. link in the description of the podcast. Okay, thank okay you. good. So, yeah, I think what would be good is uh, we come and see this with very big pockets, maybe in September time, and uh, bring some investment is with us and uh, let them see what it actually happens the fact that it's on the ground and maybe we can see some visible gold would be uh, would be amazing I think so I think let's see if we can plan to do something like that yeah, you'd be very very welcome indeed I think you'd find it very interesting and it is fascinating indeed to think you can actually in this area pick up a, a rock and, and, and see gold in it uh, and then when you analyze that rock you get these sort of values it's, it's um, quite an experience in itself as I said to you, I still have this from uh, Clontribut, which is uh, the sparkly bits with the gold in it. Uh, obviously, nobody on the podcast can see it, but I'm holding up a piece <laughs> of the rock that we knocked out of the river basin in, uh, right. in Clontribut, which has gold in it. So, yeah, all good. I think the more people that believe, the more the share price is going to uh, accelerate, I think. Um, and hopefully this is uh, this is one of those steps. Good. Well, on that note, we'll wrap things up and say, Professor Richard Conroy of Conroy Gold and Natural Resources, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.